They can focus on items with both eyes, or they can see individual images out of each eye. And if you think about it, most of your prey animals are set up that way, and that's for the exclusive intention of being able to detect predators. They have very acute hearing. They need to detect where those predators are, for example. And in our case, we represent the predator when we're working with them. Therefore, we need to limit the amount of hooting and hollering and yelling and, dis and disruption that we give those animals because it's very disturbing. Uh, also, making very fast and abrupt movements is something that they detect very easily. So when you work with animals, you really do need to remain calm. They also have a flight zone. It is the safety zone an animal will keep between itself and a person or another animal. The size of the flight zone is determined by the cattle's experience with people. If they have been around people who interacted favorably with them, they will have a small flight zone. If they have been pasture animals with little exposure to humans, they will be highly suspicious and their flight zone will be large. This means a person can't get too close before the cattle may attempt an escape move. You move loose cattle by working at the edge of their flight zone, applying pressure to the zone by moving in and out. Determining the size of the flight zone is very important. If you get cattle all excited, the flight zone will get bigger. Calm cattle tend to have a smaller flight zone. This is a diagram that just sort of schematically shows the flight zone. You'll notice that the animal has a blind spot right behind the rear end. Cattle have panoramic vision. They can see all around without turning their head, except for one little blind spot. Now the circle in the diagram represents the edge of the flight zone. And, and how do you know whether you're inside or outside the flight zone? Well, if the cattle are turning and looking at you, then you're outside the flight zone. And then they move away, you're inside the flight zone. Another principle in working the flight zone is you need to alternately penetrate the flight zone to make a move and then back off. The principle is you alternately apply pressure on the flight zone. When the animal starts to move too fast, you need to back off and relieve the pressure. When the animal slows down, you go back and put a little more pressure on the flight zone again. Now here's an example of a person who got too close. He's running some cattle down an alley. They start to turn back. So he makes the mistake of running up there on top of them and just getting too close. And why do the cattle turn back? Because they want to get this man out of their flight zone. Now what he should have done is backed off him. Back off him. Back out of the flight zone. You need to back up when the cattle give the first little indication that they're upset or they're going to turn back. 